Hi guys, this video is all about coral cheeks and lips, but kind of mostly focusing on the cheeks, I guess. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you may or may not know that I recently got back from vacation. I was at the beach for um, about a week, and while I was down there, I totally fell in love with a product. It's the Bobbi Brown Pot Rouge for Lips and Cheeks in the color Cabo Coral, and it's absolutely perfect. I love this color so much. I literally wore this on my cheeks and my lips every single day. I think this is such a beautiful look for summer. It inspired me to make a video. Something about like apricot coral cheeks is just really, really exotic to me. I think it's just so pretty and totally reminds me of the tropics. But I know that sometimes getting that perfect color can be kind of hard. When I looked for other colors like this before, you know, you look at it in the store, it looks like a true coral color, but you get it home and it's either like really, really orange or in the daylight it's just like very very pink and that's fine if that's what you're going for but that's not really a true coral color. I'm gonna be saying the word coral a lot of times in this video so just to warn you. So I'm definitely gonna show you of course how I apply this, how I use it on my lips and my cheeks and also um, the brushes I'm using and kind of how I apply it. It's definitely a little bit different than normal blush application I'd say. Um, just because this isn't really your normal blush color. Um, for some people it might be, but not for me. So I'm going to show you everything I do to get this kind of a look. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it. You can um, pick and choose the things you like best and put them together. You can do like one of the steps, doesn't matter. This is the Bobbi Brown Pot Rouge for lips and cheeks. And this is the color Cabo Coral. It's moisturizing enough to wear on your lips, but it's not too greasy to wear on your cheeks. It's really, really nice. Like I said, I've been using this so much where I've tried so many different colors. This is really my favorite one. You can see how beautiful the color really is. I don't know. Um, it looks like it's really showing up true to color in the camera. Well, obviously, you can definitely use a powder blush too. This is just what I like. Um, I tend to think that if you use a cream color, you can really build it up and keep it looking natural and believable. You can kind of layer the color on without it looking fake. I'm also using my Sigma F82 brush. It's a round top kabuki, it looks like that, and, and I don't dip the brush right into the cheek color, um, just because, you know, being that it is a cream, you're going to get all kinds of like fuzzies and things in there anyways, so I try to just use my finger to keep it a little bit cleaner. So I get a little bit of the product on my finger, and I tend to apply a much wider band of color when I'm actually applying a coral blush. I like to dot it on a little bit farther, the apple of my cheek is like right here, and I like to dot it a little bit behind that. That way you have some wiggle room so you can blend it inward. I'm just going to do one side to start off. So I'm only going around the edges of what I just applied, first of all. That's very important because if you rub the center of the color too much, it's, you're going to get like a bare spot. Pretty much no matter what product you use, you can get like tend to get a bare spot right there if you just keep rubbing the center. You want that to be the most intensity, so you kind of leave that alone. Blend around the edge of it, it'll really take care of that for you too. So. I think a wider band of color across your cheek when you're using a color like coral is really um, more flattering. I think it's more modern and I think it keeps it looking pretty believable because if you think about it, you know, your natural flesh, like say you spend a day in the sun, your natural flesh isn't going to be in like one tiny little strip. It's going to be a much bigger area of color. So not only do I take it up a little bit farther to my eye, which is really pretty because it kind of emphasizes your cheekbone by bumping that color up closer to your eye, but I also kind of take it in a little farther right here. You can just like feather it like that. Um, and you probably don't want to take it much farther down than the hollow of your cheek. Then if you want to add intensity, the best way, so I'm going to take some more on my finger and just dot it right there. Just leave it there and blend around the edge. So normally I wouldn't take my blushes this high and I wouldn't bring them in this far on my cheek. Some people wear their blush like that. Um, but I find with coral it's much more wearable, it's much more natural. I like to see it peeking around the side of my face. You know, I like to see that glowy apricot color on from like the front. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side. Same thing, dotting it on a little bit farther back than the apple of my cheek. Or the ap yeah, apple of my cheek. <laughs> And um, just dabbing it on so you don't lift the color off right away by blending too much with your finger. You don't want to over blend because you want to keep that moisture in it because the moisture is what's going to keep it looking really natural. Swirling around the outside with my F82 brush and I'm going to bring it in a little bit farther and a little bit farther up towards my eye and a little farther in towards my 
nose. So you can totally leave your cheek color like this if you want to. Um, oftentimes that's what I'll do. But if you want a really cool trick to lock in your cheek color and also um, keep it looking kind of dimensional. So don't worry, you're not going to change this color that much. I think it's fun to use kind of a tropical like strawberry pink. This is a great one and this is the Laura Mercier Second Skin Cheek Color in Lotus Pink. And this is the most beautiful color. I absolutely love it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that on my Ankle Top Kabuki F84. This looks like a super dense brush, which might scare you if you just want to apply a light veil of color. But honestly, this brush is amazing. Looks definitely deceive in this case. This will give you the kind of um, look that a brush similar to this one would. This is a duo fiber, like stippling type brush. And if you just use the really fluffy white bristles, you'll get a nice light sheer wash of color but this one will give you buildable color so you can get the same exact effect with this and then barely just dust it on over the coral blush that's gonna add a little bit more punch to your color um, it actually adds a little bit of a pretty highlight because um, this blush doesn't have heavy shimmer it just has the most delicate shimmer it's absolutely gorgeous so I really like doing that a lot now if you find that you need to blend your blush out a little bit more, these brushes really do the job for you to be honest, but if you find that you do, or you've come a little bit far down too far, you can take any kind of powder brush and take some loose powder or you know mineralized skin finish. Normally I would probably use that instead. Um, I'm just going to use the Makeup Forever HD Loose Powder and sweep it up like that. Okay, so in the dead of summer, I probably wouldn't worry about blending this blush out too much, but, um, you know, I just got back from the beach, so I have a little bit of color to my skin, but I know before I left, I had to definitely make sure that I did this last step, because if you have really pale skin, and you put a really pigmented color on your cheek, it's going to look kind of odd just sitting on top of really, really light skin. If you do a sheer wash, it'll look beautiful, but if you want a really intense, punchy color, you might find it looks a little better if you blend it with some bronzer. So I usually save my bronzer for last if I'm using a cream blush. Sometimes I don't. It's just kind of a weird uh, routine I've gotten into. So I'm going to use, again, that same powder brush. This is the C309 from Coastal Sense. I use this for my bronzer every single day. This is a great brush. This is the Laura Mercier Dune Bronze bronzing powder. I'm going to be doing a video coming up really, really soon on bronzing, a really cool trick you can do with bronzer, and self tanners and tips and tricks for that too. So then I'm just going to do the old three shape technique and make a three and blend that bronzer right into the cheek color. And I think you can see how it just really, it kind of helps the cheek color gradually blend into the rest of your skin. And it's not going to be something that's super noticeable. It's just kind of a subtle thing you can do. If you do have a deeper skin tone, you might want to go for a darker bronzer. This one is great for medium to light skin. You might want to go for something a little darker, but this one works for me pretty well. If you're having trouble finding a color for you, you might just want to use like a darker powder foundation. Um, that works too, because it's matte, so it's not going to add a ton of shimmer. For lips, I think it's beautiful to just use the exact same color. I really, really love this on your lips. I think it's a great texture. Um, it's not drying, it's not like super, super moisturizing, like beyond belief, but it's not drying whatsoever. It's just kind of like a satin, like pretty much a matte finish, which I really, really like. If you want to add gloss on top, obviously you can. You can also add a little bit of lip liner, just if you don't want your cheeks and your lips to match exactly. You could use a little bit of like a natural colored lip liner. This is the Rimmel lasting finish uh, lip liner in natural. Apparently I was saying that word like wrong this whole time, Rimmel. I feel weird saying Rimmel, but anyway, it's Rimmel. So I just went ahead and applied that on top of the pot rouge and just filled in the outer, yeah, outer edges of my lips like that. If you don't want your lips and your cheeks like to be matching, adding a lip liner on top of the pot rouge will help to define your lips a little bit, um, separate them from the color that's going on in your cheeks, but still have like a whole coordinated look going on. Also, if you, you know, want a little bit of a darker color, this is a really great one, the NARS Velvet Gloss Lip Pencil in the color Happy Days. I just added that on top for a little bit of a shine. It's a velvet gloss, so it goes really well with the pot rouge. It's not too shiny. So that's pretty much it for this look. I really hope you guys enjoyed this and tried it out at home, of course. Um, and experiment with other colors, the colors you already have. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye.